It is challenging to find a material object or substance that would captivate the consciousness of mankind as much as this one. No wonder. It has earned numerous prizes in the most E category, very valuable prizes. For instance, it is the most expensive substance that humanity possesses. According to NASA estimates, the production of one gram of it would cost $100 trillion. That's five times the annual U.S. budget. It is 2.5 trillion times more expensive than gold and 3 trillion times more expensive than black caviar. This substance is also the best explosive in the world. In terms of explosion strength, nothing can be compared to it, even theoretically. It is as impossible to surpass its power as it is to exceed the speed of light. Moreover, it is the most mysterious substance. So mysterious that if our world was created by God, the existence of this substance allows us to accuse God of bias. Now, let's take a closer look at this most mysterious and intriguing substance. It's called antimatter. The prefix anti means that it is the complete opposite of our familiar matter, the world to which each of us belongs. So opposite that when it comes into contact with ordinary matter, a grandiose explosion occurs, called annihilation, which in Latin literally means complete destruction. Matter and antimatter will completely disappear, turning into light and energy. Matter will disintegrate not even into atoms, but into particles much smaller than them. To comprehend the monstrously huge amount of energy released during annihilation, let's consider some figures. In 2021, U.S. thermal power plants burned 419 million tons of coal to generate 844 terawatt-hours of electricity. If we had a power plant running on antimatter, it would only take 17 kilograms of antimatter to produce this amount of electricity. Imagine the difference, a vast mountain of coal, requiring more than 4 million railway cars to transport, versus an ordinary travel bag with 17 kilograms of antimatter, easily lifted by one person. No pollution, no huge emissions of carbon dioxide. Greta Thunberg would be pleased. And the discovery of such a grandiose reservoir of clean energy was accidental. Prior to this discovery, humanity didn't even know about it. In 1930, a 28-year-old English theoretical physicist was solving the equation of electron motion at speeds close to the speed of light. It all came down to solving a quadratic equation describing the electron's energy value. However, the quadratic equation, as you know, has two roots, which means two solutions. With one root, everything is clear, a well-known electron corresponds to it. But what did the second, negative root mean? Well, energy can't be negative, can it? Many scientists, upon learning about the result obtained, dismissed it, claiming the second solution had no physical meaning. They acted like ordinary school children, dismissing the second value in a problem as having no physical meaning. Yet, Dirac insisted that the second solution must also have a physical meaning, a particle exactly like an electron but with a positive charge, namely, an anti-electron. Moreover, Dirac predicted the annihilation of the pair, electron plus positron with the release of a large amount of energy. Oh, how he was criticized for his stubbornness. Notably, by Heisenberg, a close friend of Dirac, who once said, the saddest chapter of modern physics is and remains Dirac's theory. I consider it simply rubbish that no one can take seriously. However, the truth eventually triumphed, and in 1932, K. E. D. Anderson discovered this anti-electron, which he called the positron, a positive electron. So, Dirac was right. Does antimatter exist? If there's a positron, there must be an antiproton, a particle like a proton, but with a negative charge. There must also be an antineutron. Combining an antiproton with an antineutron and launching positrons around them, we create an antiatom. And many antiatoms create antimatter. And that means there is also annihilation, a huge source of energy. We already gave an example of this immense energy at the beginning of the video, a peaceful option, so to speak. The military prospects are no less grandiose. The annihilation of one gram of matter releases 100 trillion joules of energy, equivalent to detonating a 10 kiloton atomic bomb. Hiroshima was destroyed by a 15 kiloton atomic bomb, for which it would take only 1.5 grams of antimatter. But many scientists stubbornly refused to believe in antimatter, just as they had previously refused to believe in the positron. 
Yes, there is a positron, but it is a one-of-a-kind particle, a whim of the creator, in a manner of speaking. Antimatter does not exist. If it did, there would be anti-planets, anti-stars, anti-galaxies. We would notice them from the grandiose cosmic explosions. We would never have nights. The whole sky would be on fire. Moreover, the laws of our world are symmetrical. For the universe or God, everything is the same, matter or antimatter. At the time of the creation of matter after the Big Bang, the same number of atoms and antiatoms should have been created. If so, there would be a grandiose bang, and instead of the universe, we would have a boundless ocean of light and elementary particles. The experimental discovery of the antiproton in 1955 at the newly launched Bevatron accelerator was a non-trivial result. In 1956, the antineutron was also discovered in the same accelerator. The last doubts disappeared, antimatter really exists. When the first antiatoms were discovered in 1965, antihydrogen atoms, it did not cause such a hype. No Nobel Prize was given for it. Scientists who completely refuse to believe in the existence of antimatter apparently intuitively understood that this question is too fundamental and can shatter our ideas about the world. It's the nature of antimatter, it has tremendous destructive power. But for now, we will keep the intrigue on this issue and first explain some interesting facts about antimatter. Fact 1. Why is antimatter considered the most expensive substance in the world? We mentioned before that one gram of antimatter costs about $100 trillion. Why such a staggering price? For two reasons. First, the enormous complexity of production. To extract such material, very precise and energy-intensive technologies are needed. To create one gram of antimatter, it would take a whole year to use all the electricity generated on the planet, approximately 25 million billion kilowatt hours of energy. To date, the inefficiency in the production of antimatter is enormous. Given the costs of obtaining antimatter, only a tenth of a billion of invested energy can be returned. If scientists could collect all the antimatter we have ever produced and destroy it, the energy produced would not even be enough to boil a cup of tea. Secondly, the huge costs of storing antimatter. The world we live in is made up of ordinary matter. As we know, annihilation occurs at the contact of opposite types of matter. Fact 2. Antimatter is closer to you than you think. One should not think that antimatter is hidden somewhere in the depths of the cosmos. Hundreds, thousands, and millions of light years away from us. Small amounts of antimatter are constantly raining down on Earth in the form of cosmic rays, consisting of elementary particles. These antimatter particles reach our atmosphere in amounts ranging from 1 to over 100 per square meter. There are other sources of antimatter that are closer to us. For example, bananas. They produce antimatter by emitting one positron about once every 75 minutes. This is because bananas contain small amounts of potassium-40, one of the isotopes of potassium. The decay of potassium-40 sometimes produces a positron. The human body also has potassium-40. Therefore, each of us emits more than 4,000 positrons per day, or about 180 positrons per hour. Fact 3. Many people associate antimatter with the cosmos and flights to the stars, thanks to science fiction. Antimatter is indeed an ideal fuel. Probably, many have seen a photo or video of the launch of the Saturn V rocket, which delivered astronauts to the moon. Remember this colossus, 110m high, 10m in diameter, and weighing 2,965 tons. 90% of that weight was fuel. Can you imagine how much fuel you need to get to Mars? Poor Elon Musk. But if humanity had an engine running on antimatter, then it would take only one milligram. And since we are talking about the cosmos, let's discuss the most intriguing thing related to antimatter. Why is there so little of it in the universe? Where are the anti-stars, anti-galaxies? Where, after all, is the anti-universe, a mirror image of our universe? How nice it would be to realize that somewhere out there, beyond some line, your double lives, your exact copy. And if something in your life is not right, maybe, on the contrary, everything is okay with them. Admit it, it's nice to have a kindred spirit, even if it's billions of light years away from you.
So why isn't there anything like this? There is a fundamental law in the world, which has not yet been proven by anyone, but it has not been broken in any experiment for a long time. It says that there is capped in symmetry, from the capital letters charge, parity, time, meaning the behavior of any physical system, including the entire universe, should not change when all particles are simultaneously replaced by antiparticles, parity, and time inversion. In other words, for matter and antimatter, all physical laws must be the same. Therefore, the number of particles and antiparticles must be exactly the same. But the catch is that matter and antimatter do not tolerate each other. On contact, they annihilate. But then, as we said above, the universe would simply not exist. Yet, since you are watching this video, it still exists and is not going to explode, at least for the next couple of billion years. So where did the antimatter go, which should have been formed after the Big Bang in the first moments of the existence of our universe? Scientists had to admit that there is still a certain asymmetry and that more matter was formed in the Big Bang than antimatter. Calculations show that it was enough for every 10 billion identical quark-antiquark pairs to have just one extra quark. Over time, these millions of pairs annihilated, and from one extra particle, all the matter of the universe came out, which we can see around us. It turns out that CPT symmetry is not fulfilled with absolute accuracy. But it had to be proven. We needed to find a physical process in which the symmetry would be broken. And such a process was found. In 1956, Chinese-American scientist Qian Cheng Wu, also known as Madame Wu, conducted her famous experiment, which was later named after her. The experiment proves that the parity conservation law does not work in weak interactions. That is, the laws of physics are different for our and the mirror world. For some reason, for God or nature, we turned out to be a priority. As to why, so far, no one has been able to give an answer. But if it was different, if there was equality, then our universe, and therefore we, people, would not exist. So, equality is not always a good thing. What do you think about this? Write about it in the comments below this video. And if you enjoyed it, please press like to appreciate our work. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel, there are still a lot of secrets of the universe that we will talk about.